Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn about view serializability. What is meant by view serializability? A schedule is said to be view serializable if it is view equivalent to a serial schedule. You know what is meant by serial schedule. As I have already explained in the previous video, so uh, if a schedule is conflict serializable, then it will be view serializable. So we have seen what is conflict serializability. So if you can see a schedule is conflict serializable, then it will be view serializable also. But it doesn't mean that a view serializable which does not be conflict serializable contains blind right. So uh, let us see uh, how what are the conditions for the view serializability. So let us have two schedules S and S dash. So uh, this uh, S and S dash be two schedules with the same set of transactions. So then S and S dash are said to be view equivalent if one of the conditions are met. What are those conditions? So if in a schedule S, suppose we have a transaction TI that reads the initial value of Q, then in the second schedule S dash also the, trans the same transaction must read the initial value of Q. That means that if you have two schedules, in uh, then the transaction T1 in uh, schedule S and the transaction um, uh, T1 in the schedule S dash should read the same initial value of this one. So if it is same operation, if uh, transaction T1 is reading uh, the value of Q in uh, schedule S, then a transaction T1 in S, a schedule S dash also should read um, the data item Q. So, a second condition is that if in schedule S, transaction TI executes read Q and that value was produced by transaction TJ. So, if there is one transaction which execute read Q and that value was produced by transaction TJ, then in schedule S dash also, transaction TI must read the value of Q that was produced by the same write operation of transaction TJ. So, that is also, the, that also should be satisfied for view serializability. The third condition is that, if uh, the transaction that performs the final write operation in schedule S, then the, trans the same transaction should uh, perform the final write operation in schedule S dash also. So, view equivalence is purely as we can see that it is based on read and write alone. So, if you see the example, you can understand in a more better way. Uh, but as we have seen in for the conflict serializability, we have checked whether a particular um, schedule is conflict serializable by means of precedence graph. But that uh, um, precedence graph test for conflict serializability, we cannot use it here for directly to test the view serializability. So, um, actually uh, the extension to, uh, there are certain extension to test the view serializability, but it is, um, uh, it will be increasing the size of the precedence graph and all. So, the problem of checking a schedule whether it is a view serializable then it falls in the class, class of NP complete problems. So, there is actually um, the existence of an efficient algorithm is uh, extremely unlikely but still we can check for the uh, con sufficient conditions for the view serializability. So, what are the conditions that we can check? So, uh, the first thing is how when you can say a, a schedule is view equivalent. So, two schedules S1 and S2 are said to be view equivalent if they satisfy the following conditions. So, what are the conditions? So, if these conditions are satisfied, then you can say schedule S1 and S2 are said to be in view equivalent. The first condition is initial read. First, we need to check for the read condition. Initial read. Suppose you have a schedule S1, another schedule S2. Both set should have the same set of transactions. So, you can see here in schedule S1, we have T1 and T2 and in schedule S2 also T1 and T2. So, the initial, we are talking about the initial read. So, in schedule S1, the initial uh, read of this one is read A. In schedule S1, the initial read is done by transaction T1, that is read A. So, that means that in transaction S2 also, the initial uh, read of uh, A should be done by transaction T1 only. So, here in S1, the initial read is done by transaction T1 and in uh, schedule S2 also, the initial read should be done by T1 only. So, that is initial read condition. So, here this about to this um, schedule S1 and S2 are view equivalent because the initial read in um, schedule S1 is run by, done by T1. It is same as in schedule S2, the initial read is done by T1. So, it is the same. So, this is 
view equivalent the second condition we will see second condition is updated read updated read means if in schedule s1 so here also the same schedule we have two schedules s1 and s2 and we have in schedule uh, both the transactions t1 t2 t3 both the schedules have same set of transaction that is also important both the schedules should have same set of transactions so here in um, s1 suppose in schedule s1 if ti is reading a which is updated by tj then in S2 also that TI should read A which is updated by TJ. So if uh, some transaction is updated by another transaction in schedule S1. So and if it is read, read by another transaction the same uh, sequence should be there in schedule S2 also. For example in this one if you see um, the reading reading a so uh, now we can see in transaction t1 write a is the first one and the second operation is write a and third uh, is t3 that is read a so read a is or read a in transaction uh, t3 in schedule s1 is followed by write a of transaction t2 so whatever value written by the transaction t2 is read by uh, transaction T3. So, the updated value uh, is in T2 that is read by T3 that is in schedule S1. So, in schedule S2 also the updation uh, the updated value by T2 should be read by uh, T3. So, we will see what is that one here. So, in uh, T1 here uh, write a, the first transaction first operation is write a in T2 the second operation is write a in T1 and the third operation is read a in T3 in schedule S2 but in the first schedule you can see the read a is the, the a value is updated by transaction T2 and then it is read by transaction T3 so the same uh, updation should be done in S2 also it means here if you can see T3 is read a uh, the value read by T3 should be the value updated by transaction T2. But in this particular case, you can see uh, the first uh, operation is in transaction T2 and after T2, it is coming T1 and the value updated in T1 is read by T3. Uh, T3. So, you can see here the value of A updated by T1 is read by the transaction T3 and not by T2, the not updated by T2. So, here in uh, schedule S1, you can see the read A is updated by the value of A updated by T2, but in schedule S2, you can see the read A in T3 is uh, the A is updated by T1. So, here you can see this is not same. So, the two schedules are not view equal because in S1, T3 is reading A updated by T2 and in um, S2, T3 is reading A updated by T1. So, this is not view equivalent. So, now we will see the third condition that is the final write. So, the condition is that final write must be same between both the schedules. So, suppose in uh, schedule S1, if a transaction T1 updates A at last, then in S2 final operations uh, should also be done by T1. So, suppose uh, in a schedule, if T1 is the final updation and uh, write, uh, written by the uh, transaction T1 suppose here in this example you have two schedules given schedule S1 and schedule S2 so what is the condition is that if in schedule S1 if a transaction T1 updates A at the last uh, then in S2 also the final operation should be done by T1 only so here in this particular case you can see schedule S1 uh, you can see the final write is written by uh, write is done by transaction T3 so, here in transaction in schedule S2 also the final write should be done by transaction T3. So, you can see here in this schedule S2 also final write is done by transaction T3 and in schedule S1 also final write is done by transaction T3. So, this condition is satisfied that means it is view equal. So, here uh, the two schedules are view equal because the final write operation in S1 is done by T3. And in S2 also the final write is done by T3. So, this both are view equal. So, this is uh, uh, the third condition. So, we will see the first condition is initial read. The second one is updation. Then the third one is write final 
right so let us see one example here we have a schedule so we have t1 t2 t3 in this schedule so we have read uh, operation which is done by transaction t1 followed by write in t2 then followed by uh, write in uh, t1 and the final operation is write in uh, t3 so we can in with this three three transaction we can have um, uh, various types of uh, schedule possible schedules if we see this transaction t1 t2 t3 as you know that in schedule uh, the transaction should be same t1 t2 t3 but the order of this can be different so the possible um, uh, the possibilities of the total number of possibilities of this t1 t2 t3 are uh, six that is three factorial we have three here so three factorial six so in uh, we have this possible schedules um, six type of schedules are possible from the set that is t1 t2 t3 then t1 t3 t2 t2 t3 t1 t2 t1 t3 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 t1 t2 t3 t1 t2 t3 t2 t1 so these are the possible combinations so let us take one um, combination out of this s1 let us consider so t1 t2 t3 so in this one let us take the first schedule s1 this is the original uh, one schedule s t1 t2 t3 first read then write then write in t1 and the final write is in t3 and in schedule s1 uh, we have made for the first two operations in read and write in t1 then comes t2 and then comes uh, t3 so here uh, in this particular case first one is we are first seeing the final read updation because read a is here in this first transaction um, so in both the schedule this read a is not repeating in a either of this transaction t2 or t3 even in schedule s1 in schedule s also there is no read operation but the first operation initial read is here the first one is read and there are no more read operations here so uh, both schedules there are no read except the initial read so we don't have to check that condition so final read updation we don't have to uh, check because there is only one initial read in both the schedules second one is like a um, initial read uh, this is read updation then initial read we will be checking so in even this um, schedule s1 the initial read is done by transaction t1 so the condition is that if the initial read is done by the transaction t1 in schedule s1 then the initial read should be done by t1 in schedule s also so that is matching here you can see in t1 in schedule s1 the initial read is done by t1 and in schedule s also initial read is done by t1 so that is matching so it is view equivalent now uh, let us see uh, final write so in uh, schedule s the final write is done by transaction t3 you can see here uh, initial write is done by t2 then t1 and then t3 so if in schedule s the in final write is done by t3 then in schedule s1 also it should be done by t3 then only it will be view equivalent so we see here the final uh, write operation is s is done by t3 same uh, the final write operation is done by uh, transaction t3 in schedule s1 also so both are view equivalent so the first schedule uh, we have taken the first schedule that is t1 t2 t3 uh, it is satisfying all the conditions uh, all the three conditions so we don't have to check for another schedule uh, because here it is v equivalent serial schedule so the v equivalent uh, serial schedule is t1 t2 t3 so this uh, this is all these three conditions are satisfied so this is how we will be checking for the view serializability we have to check for these three conditions that is initial read so if the initial read is done by a transaction in the schedule the same transaction should uh, read the initial one and the updation also uh, you can see if uh, the read operation is um, done by uh, the read of a particular data item is done by the updation of particular transaction the same transaction updation should be there for the read operation in schedule uh, the second schedule also final write is if in a particular schedule if the write operation is done by a transaction the same transaction should give the write operation in the second schedule also then you can say that it is view serializable so this is uh, by this example i suppose you understood how what is meant by view serializability and how you can check for the view serializability and the view equivalent serial schedule also we can find from uh, this one so hope you understood uh, thanks for watching. Thank you all.